2009. So the decade started with a bang, uh, with this revolutionary method for altering neuronal function, uh, optogenetics. It is currently for use in animals. Ultimately, it will be used in research and therapies in humans. The basic idea is that neurons are genetically engineered to fire or do other things when illuminated by a certain wavelength of light. The light can then be used to turn specific populations of neurons on and off with millisecond timing. Wow. 2009 also marked the first salvo of statistical criticisms of neuroimaging. This paper, Puzzlingly High Correlations, was initially titled Voodoo Statistics to give you a feel for the emotional tone uh, early on in this debate. Not all imaging studies were problematic, but certainly many were. Other criticisms followed, but now I'd say the message has gotten through and standards of practice are generally good. 2010. We're going to start with a theoretical development put forth by a pioneer of image analysis, Carl Friston, who then turned his formidable intellect to a unified theory of brain function, including the C word, consciousness. Free energy is a concept from thermodynamics, but the mathematical formalisms that describe it work, um, can be applied in interesting ways to the brain. Also in 2010, a landmark paper on vegetative patients, who are people like Terry Schiavo, who seem to have no awareness at all. Using fMRI, researchers showed that some of them, not all, do have awareness, and they can answer yes-no questions. So there are two stages to this project. First, the patients were told, imagine playing tennis, or imagine walking through your home. Now, the, the amazing thing is that some such patients, including five of this series of 54, activate the same parts of the brain when imagining tennis or a walk through the home that normal control subjects do. Um, and that's uh, part of what is conveyed in, that, in the image. Sure, uh, let's see. Okay, second, they were then told to answer yes to a question that you hear, imagine playing tennis. And to answer no, imagine walking through your home. For the five patients who showed the characteristic tennis versus home walk activation, it worked. They were able to give true answers to questions that were posed to them. 2011 uh, saw the FDA approval for a kind of biblical feat of neurotechnology, an artificial retina, which let blind people have some functional vision. Also this year, uh, one of the more spectacular neuro law stories broke. Um, a woman who pled guilty to a grisly murder of her sister was originally sentenced to life in prison, but abnormalities, structural abnormalities in brain areas linked to self-control and emotion, led the judge to resentence her to just 20 years. 2012. Every year or two, Jack Gallant improves on fMRI mind reading. This 2012 paper was a watershed showing video clips that subjects had never before seen top, top row and using their brain activity to, compi to compile and combine, hence the blurry quality of the bottom row, videos from YouTube that the system predicted would evoke the observed brain activity. And you can see the, you know, semi-decent uh, correspondence between them. And just for fun, 
but also showing how widely fMRI is being adopted. Greg Burns trained awake dogs to be still enough to do fMRI and learned some interesting things about the canine mind. 2013 was a big year for big science in neuroscience. This audacious project um, to essentially start with small local neuronal circuits and build up from there, bottom up to understanding the human brain, had a budget of over a billion euro. And it's still ongoing. Uh, okay, I can't take time because the little clock is ticking, but there's lots more to be said about this thing. After two years, tossed out the leaders, and uh, anyway, because they were insisting on really bottom up local circuits. Not to be outdone, the US uh, in the same year uh, launched the Brain Initiative. Alas, on a shoestring budget, mainly reallocating money from other neuroscience research. And a different model of big science translated to neuroscience was also tried that year. That is the gathering of huge amounts of neuroscience data, more than any one lab could ever collect, um, as in the Human Connectome Project, to be used by the whole research community. This has been great. I've used HCP myself. I, I know Allison has, probably other people here. Um, and many more such projects now exist. 2014, a big year for brain-computer interaction. Um, the ceremonial opening kick for the 2014 World Cup soccer games was made by a paralyzed man wearing an exoskeleton who directed his legs by scalp-reported EEG by brain waves. The same year, DARPA launched one of their characteristically kind of insanely ambitious projects that they called subnets with the goal of correcting psychiatric problems by detecting abnormal brain activity from, from inside the brain and nudging it back to normal with electrical impulses also delivered inside the brain. Progress, not surprisingly, has been slow, but not zero. 2015, not the first year that scientists had coaxed human pluripotent stem cells to grow into bumps of neural tissue, but it was the first time they found evidence of synapses forming and neurons signaling to each other. Little human brains in petri dishes. And too much fanfare in 2016, think marketed its non-invasive brain stimulation device, that's the one on the left. With different settings, they promised energy like from a cup of coffee or relaxation like from a glass of wine. Focus and hum, also pictured here, are now also in the business, focusing on the coffee effect. And I think has gone out of business. 2016. And now for something completely different in a neuroscience talk. We have the intestines. One of the most unexpected and significant new insights into brain function has been its bi-directional relationship with gut bacteria. Clinical trials are now enrolling for fecal transplants to treat depression and other disorders. 2016 is also the year the company that all cognitive neuroscientists love to hate, <laughs> Lumosity, uh, got called out for making false claims. Not by the FDA, incidentally, but by the FTC. 2017. Okay, so artificial intelligence has been beating grandmasters at chess for years, but Go is computationally much tougher. Following brain-inspired computational learning systems pioneered by people like Jeff Hinton, 
Demi Hassidis developed a computer that learned to beat the top human players of Go and landed on the cover of Science. Also in 2017, just how damaging professional football is to the brain has remained somewhat unclear, thanks in part to a program of coordinated obfuscation uh, on the part of the NFL straight out of Big Tobacco's playbook. This 2017 JAMA article removed all doubt. In 178 post-mortem brains from NFL players, 177 had pathological evidence of CTE. Last, 2018, here's another case of a seemingly off-topic area of biology, holding key insights into the brain. Not the gut this time, but the immune system, which causes inflammation. Not just depression, but many mental disorders seem to involve immune malfunctioning, which opens up whole new avenues for understanding and treatment. Finally, we know that most cognitive and psychiatric disorders have their roots early in brain development. Until recently, we could not study the living human brain before birth, which is like missing the first reel of a movie. But now Mariah Thomason has figured out how to do fMRI in utero. You can see here. Okay, so. 2019, that is the 11th year. It's not over yet, so luckily I don't have to summarize it. Um, let me just say, I know the slides went by fast. <clears throat> um, my explanations were short. Uh, some of my choices may have been a bit idiosyncratic, <coughs> like dog fMRI. But I hope you nevertheless did see what a thriving project neuroscience is, how urgently society needs a better understanding of the human brain, and how current progress bodes very well for our future. In sum, what a time to be alive. Thank you.